I can't begin to tell you how excited I am for the Steam Deck. I have been dreaming of a device like this, a portable PC that has the right ergonomics, an incredible amount of flexibility with its inputs. It just looks so comfortable to hold, and it has a screen that is just the right resolution, I think, for a device of this stature, and it seems to have enough horsepower to drive and carry triple a games at least at 30 fps and you can always tweak settings to make that better uh this is just looking like a home run for valve and steam so far and for those who don't know what the prices are here you go though if you haven't reserved yet you'll have to wait until after quarter two of 2022 to get yours i'm getting mine on quarter two uh i'm sort of i guess the second wave of steam deck devices even though i pre-ordered like literally on the second of or it took me a bit because the website was going so slow because so many people were flooding in trying to get the device. But yeah, bottom line, I'm excited. I think tons of people are excited. But I feel like what isn't being talked about enough is the way Valve has been engaging with the community and putting at the forefront this user first mentality, being some of the most transparent, if not the most transparent I've seen a platform manufacturer B with details about the hardware and its customizability, its modability, people's ability to repair it, fix it, break it down, modify components, you name it. I already got very good vibes when Valve released this video back in October 6, 2021, titled Take a Look Inside Steam Deck, where long before the console's launch, they decided to do a teardown video for the console. Now they do stipulate in the video, for the average user, don't do this. But they know, of course, that people, uh, more technically savvy folks are going to dive in there and they'll want to do what they want to do with the device that they own. So they're like, we know this is going to happen. So for those who are in that camp, let me just show you how to do it properly. And already they were off to the races. Already uh, they were just giving off such positive vibes and garnering such goodwill from a community that, you know, with previous Steam products, uh, they have not been entirely successful. Steam Deck feels like a culmination of all those learnings, and now with the added layer of this transparency, it is just taking this product to a whole new height, I think. But then comes the second layer to all of this. Earlier this month, on February 11th, 2022, Valve kind of surprised me when they released Steam Deck's CAD files now available, a blueprint file for a device like Steam Deck, and you can see what that looks like right here. What that essentially entails is it'll allow people who use CAD and are able to do things like, I don't know, 3D printing or, you know, want to create their own custom designs for the Steam Deck to take this file and be able to create their own custom components and essentially just pave the road to more user modability, user repairability, whatever you want to call it. Hello, good news for all tinkers, modders, accessory manufacturers, and folks who just want to 3D print a Steam Deck to see how it feels. Today we're making the CAD files for the external shell surface uh, topology of Steam Deck available for download under Creative Commons license. This includes an STP model, STL model, and drawings for reference. We're looking forward to seeing what the community creates. This is such a stark contrast from how, say, Sony has been handling things like PlayStation's faceplates, which is supposed to be this cool feature that allows for the external customizability of PlayStation 5, but Sony sort of wants to be the exclusive seller of those plates. They went down pretty hard on dbrand and threatened to sue them because they they deem their design to be too similar to uh, PlayStation's uh, own um, patent or whatever. And there are a number of outlets that try to sell their own custom plates, but had to take the websites down because they were threatened with uh, legal ramifications. And this was just faceplates, not even, you know, the whole exterior of the console, just the faceplates. There were no CAD files involved, obviously. With Steam Deck, though, Valve is saying... Here, here are the CAD files. Just go and make your own thing. We don't care. We just want people to enjoy the device that they own and do what they want with it. And we want to encourage it by releasing the CAD files themselves. So already that was a big win. But then comes the home run. Just a couple days ago on February 15th, 2022, it was announced that Valve has partnered with a company to ensure that there are replaceable parts available. Steam Deck replaceable parts. Hi all, hope everyone's doing well. 10 days and counting until launch day. Oh my God, sooner than I thought. We have some exciting news to share. If you watched our Take a Look Inside Steam Deck video, aka the Please Don't Do This video, you may remember we said certain Steam Deck replacement parts will be available for purchase. Today we're announcing that iFixit will be 
You're one of the authorized sellers of Steam Deck replacement parts, as well as replacement parts for the Valve Index VR products. We're hammering out the details, and we will be sharing more information about this soon. So this is just going to open up the ability for more technically savvy folks to be able to dive in and repair parts, replace parts, customize parts. It just takes that to a whole other level. And right here it says, in case you missed it, don't forget to check out iFixit's teardown of Steam Deck. That's right, that's already out. And the device isn't out yet. You can see right here the video in question titled Steam Deck Teardown, everything Valve said not to do. And it's got a huge amount of positive sentiment right here. And you can see right here, it's just this teardown video that goes through all of the various components. It does an x-ray at one point, and it just goes through the whole process, opening the Steam Deck, uh, retail versus pre-release hardware comparison, highlighting some of the potential differences there, uh, disconnecting the battery, which I think is one of the uh, tougher parts, but they do kind of highlight how to do that for those who want to delve into uh, doing something like that. Um, I don't know why Miles Morales is there, but yeah, thumbsticks, how easily replaceable they are has been highlighted, uh, among other things. PC Gamer actually put together an article where they highlighted some of the key details shared the joysticks being removable with no soldering is a big plus so if joystick drift ever crops up it's not a huge ordeal to replace joystick drift obviously that's a topic that's come up a lot with nintendo switch joy cons experiencing that pretty commonly and even you know playstation uh, i've seen a, a few instances of people reporting that but with steam deck you know if that ends up happening uh thankfully you know, the user can either replace it themselves or if they take it to a repair shop, it'll be easy for them to do it as well because they've got all this information that Valve has been sharing over the course of weeks and months. You can do the whole disassembly with just a Phillips screwdriver and a plastic spudger, assuming you're not also trying to remove the screen. So it really does seem like Valve made it a priority to ensure that those who do want to go full in on tearing down the Steam Deck or modding it or whatever, are able to do so in the most convenient and accessible way possible. The Steam Deck's components are labeled particularly well, which makes assembly a lot easier. There you go, which is another form of consideration and convenience. And then apparently they shared a bunch of information about the motherboard itself. And then finally, replacing the battery is technically possible, but definitely won't be easy. But for those who are going to keep the Steam Deck around for a while and want to replace the battery. You know, there are instructions online now already on how to do it. And uh, Valve uh, really is opening the door wide open for these kinds of folks. I mean, we just don't see something like this with other platform and console manufacturers, I feel. As if all that wasn't enough, Valve has also been very open and transparent about certain concerns, like how are we gonna know which games are gonna perform well on Steam Deck or are supported on Steam Deck? A couple months ago, they released this video titled Introducing Deck Verified, and you can see right here, they detail the various icons you'll see as you go through your Steam library of games or as you go through the Steam shop telling you which games are going to be the most compatible with Steam Deck. Verified means everything's A-OK. -okay. Playable means there might be a few kings to work out, but overall pretty playable. And then you've got unsupported and unknown. And what all this breeds is both goodwill as well as a confidence in your purchase because you know so much about the device. You know how much the company's emphasizing, you know, the user being able to do what they want with their own device and giving them the knowledge and the means and the tools to do it. And it just instills a certain confidence in your purchase. And this is all on top of the fact that the device really just looks like an ideal portable PC gaming device that I've always sort of dreamed of. The fact that a device like this is possible, it's sort of a technological marvel. And it's cool that we get to be alive right now to live through this stage where a device like this is even possible that has enough power to back it, that has so many input possibilities with the analog sticks, with the touch screen, with the face buttons, the traditional control layout on top of the track pads and the gyro aiming, all these options and just the ability to take PC gaming on the go that's able to play AAA games at decent to good to great performance. I mean, this is really looking like a home run and I really wish 
Valve the best of luck with this endeavor, and I hope there is going to be a Steam Deck 2 and 3 and more down the line, and hopefully this will inspire a new wave of devices. You know, I feel like a lot of companies will look at this and go, we want to make our own version, and hell, Valve has been open with um, potential manufacturers that they're happy to, you know, have Steam OS out there for those devices as well. They've left the door wide open for this kind of device to take flight, and they're not trying to monopolize this or anything. They're just putting their best foot forward with what feels like currently the best device as far as uh, portable PC gaming consoles go. And I can't wait to get mine. Beyond that, Valve just really, I think, deserves praise for engaging in a way that other companies just don't. But that's just one man's take. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts and opinions are on the Steam Deck as a device, as well as the way Valve has been communicating about it in the months, weeks, and days leading up to its launch. Share your thoughts in the comments below, and to be further updated on all things gaming news, reviews, and discussions, stay tuned right here on Young Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Young out.